This is session 16 of the Cron blog. I am Hilary and we are in Luke's account of the birth of John the Baptist having just seen Mary return home after visiting Elizabeth. So let's get started. I'm reading it in the New American Standard Bible. Now the time had come for Elizabeth to give birth and she gave birth to a son. Her neighbours and her relatives heard that the Lord had displayed his great mercy towards her and they were rejoicing with her. And it happened that on the eighth day, when they came to circumcise the child, and they were going to call him Zacharias after his father, but his mother answered and said, No, indeed, he shall be called John. And they said to her, There's no one among your relatives who's called by that name. And they made signs to his father as to what he wanted him called. And he asked for a tablet, and he wrote the following. His name is John. And they were all astonished, and at once his mouth was opened and his tongue loosed, and he began to speak in praise of God. Fear came on all those living around them, and all these matters were being talked about in the hill country of Judea. All who heard them kept them in mind, saying, What then will this child turn out to be? For the hand of the Lord was certainly with him. And then his father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit. And gave this prophecy. Praise the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has visited and redeemed his people. He has sent us a mighty saviour from the royal line of his servant David, just as he promised through his holy prophets long ago. Now we will be saved from our enemies and from all who hate us. He has been merciful to our ancestors by remembering his sacred covenant, the covenant he swore with an oath to our ancestor Abraham. We've been rescued from our enemies so we can serve God without fear, in holiness and righteousness for as long as we live. And you, my little son, will be called the prophet of the Most High because you will prepare the way for the Lord. You will tell his people how to find salvation through forgiveness of their sins. Because of God's tender mercy, the morning light from heaven is about to break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide us to the path of peace. John grew up and became strong in the spirit, and he lived in the wilderness until he began his public ministry to Israel. I noticed how the story of Zachariah's experience becomes hot gossip in the temple and the surrounding areas. And it also stood out to me that he could write, but it seems that the only person that he has written this down for, communicated it for, is Elizabeth. Everyone else is astonished at the news, but she knows that his name is to be John. So it's logical that Zacharias has told her about the angel, and what the angel has said about how she will bear a son, and that he's to be given the name John. In fact, now I come to think of it, I previously thought that her being filled with the Holy Spirit at the sound of Mary's voice was the shock to Elizabeth, but it actually might be more about the angel's prophecy. Does she make the connection between the fulfillment of the prophecy over her own child, that leap of the baby too, that he is also filled with the Holy Spirit, and then what that means? And this fact that Mary has something to do with the promised Messiah, the Lord, the him that her own baby is going to be the forerunner for. Now you'd probably caught on to that, but for me it deepens the whole meaning of Mary and Elizabeth's meeting. So the people are obviously making a big deal out of Zachariah's muteness now having suddenly disappeared, something big is going on with this baby. But the question that they are actually asking, what will this child turn out to be, is another indication that Zacharias has kept the details of the angel's prophecy really quiet before the birth. But God is about to blow the whole thing open in a prophecy that he will give Zechariah. But before we read it, I'm mulling on why God didn't just have him tell the story. My thought is that Zachariah actually needs to have this revelation for himself. He is going to need to be an advocate for his son, John. He needs to feel this in his bones. He needs to be the forerunner for his son 
to make a way for John just as John is going to make a way for the Messiah. And interestingly, the prophecy itself, making these massive statements about the Messiah, means that Zacharias is, he is staking his claim in what he believes about his own son, about the destiny of his own son. And that's a very brave thing to do. People may well have thought that he, uh, you know, has completely lost the plot. But look at the way that God has set this up. Zacharias is a priest, so he is respected among the people. He has had this physical happening, not just once, but twice. And there's the miracle of John's birth in the first place. Not just that this is a barren family, but that this is an, this is an older barren family, that this couldn't have happened by natural means. And all that spiritual whirlwind around them should help the people to pay attention to what he is saying. So here is what he said again, this time in the Bible for everyone. Blessed be the Lord, Israel's God. He's come to his people and brought them their freedom. He's raised up a horn of salvation for us in David's house, the house of his servant, just as he promised through the mouths of the prophets, the holy ones, speaking from ages old, salvation from our enemies, rescue from hatred, mercy to our ancestors, keeping his holy covenant. He swore an oath to Abraham, through our father, to give us deliverance from fear and from foes, so we might worship him, holy and righteous before his face, to the end of our days. You, child, will be called the prophet of the highest one. Go ahead of the Lord, preparing his way, letting his people know of salvation through the forgiveness of all their sins. The heart of our God is full of mercy. That's why his daylight has dawned from on high, bringing the light to the dark, as we sat in death's shadow, guiding our feet to the path of peace. And the child grew and became powerful in the spirit, and they lived in the wilderness until the day he was revealed to Israel. But the first thing that stands out to me about Zachariah's speech is that he's using present tense language. For he has visited us and has accomplished redemption for his people. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us. It's happening now. In fact, it's just happened. Now, King David sang this moment prophetically. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold in Psalm 18. And Zacharias, who of course knows the prophecies well, reminds the people that the words of them are God speaking through the mouths of those holy prophets. We looked at some of those prophecies before in our preparation sessions. Prophecies like, behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch. Zachariah is now pulling those future tense prophecies into his present day, from the days are coming to he has visited us. As I said before, this is a brave statement for him to make. His focus turns then to the foundation of their faith, God's covenant with Abraham. So let's remind ourselves of it. It's in Genesis 17. I will make you exceedingly fruitful and I will make nations of you and kings will come forth from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your descendants after you. I will give to you and your descendants after you the land of your sojournings, all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession and I will be their God. This promise is often raised by biblical authors and this theme of them being a chosen people, his people, and of staying faithful and remembering, serving holiness and righteousness. It seems to be what Zacharias is speaking over his son, like a prophetic blessing over him. He boldly and directly declares that his son has already fulfilled Isaiah's prophecy of one who would come before the Messiah 
clearing a way for the Lord. And many years later, Jesus will confirm his words, saying in Matthew 11, This is the one about who it is written, Behold, I send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare the way before you. Truly I say to you, among those born of women, there has not arisen anyone greater than John the Baptist. And just in case anyone isn't clear about that, Zechariah says that the sunrise from on high will visit them to shine upon those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death, referring back to messianic prophecy in Psalm 107 and Isaiah 9 that speak of the great light coming to those in darkness and death's shadow, a light that will shine on them. So we leave John, he's growing up powerful in the spirit, what a great statement, and he is living in the wilderness, rather him than me. I'm going to see you next time.